Welcome to this edition of Chrysalis on the Couch. My name is Jude Mason and I'm a tutor teaching years twos and threes. And with me today, I have Rihanna and Sarah. So I'm going to pass over to Rihanna to introduce herself first. Hi, Rihanna. Hi, all right. So yes, um, I am a tutor also teaching year two and three, um, so counselling. Um, and I've got classes at the moment in Reading, Cardiff, and but I am based in Bristol. So my main class mm. is usually Bristol. So I've got a few in Bristol, but I have um, also got Reading and Cardiff as well. So a couple, couple of uh, classes on the go. And do you want to introduce yourself, Sarah? Yeah, hello. So yeah, I'm Sarah. Um, I've previously done a chrysalis course um, and now I'm actually um, working as a private counsellor um, at home um, and also I work for First Steps which is an eating disorder charity and I just do some volunteer counselling for them and also some paid counselling for them as well. That's fantastic Sarah, so when did you finish your course? Oh it was last March 2020 so yeah and coming up to a year now so yeah yeah <laughs> fantastic it sounds like it's changed your life already then yeah definitely yeah yeah I was a, a little bit anxious about starting my own business but it's going really well so I've, I've got with first steps as well I've now got around eight clients a week at the moment so it's really starting to pick up well that's fantastic so did you do your placement with first steps then I did, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, I was with them for about I'm coming up to three years now that I've been with them. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant! So you're one, you're one of um, Chrysalis's success stories, then. Yeah, which <laughs> yes, is I fantastic. <laughs> it's lovely. It's lovely to have you here. Yeah, thank so, you. Today's topic is um, when I grow up. So we're going to be talking about lots of things to do with to do with growing up. But the first thing I thought it would be nice to talk about is the sorts of hopes and dreams that we had when we when we were little what what did we want to do um and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with you Sarah so what what did you want to do when you were little um I always wanted to be a PE teacher <laughs> so, oh okay <laughs> um from the age of six I started running um and I did a lot of cross-country running track running mm. um and I, was, I ran for uh, Derby ladies and I was quite good for my age mm. uh, and I just love sport. It was one thing that I really enjoyed at school was uh, PE lessons and being outdoors. So, yeah, that was that was my aspiration as a child. Oh, fantastic. But you're now a counsellor. So, now, yes. so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. were you a PE teacher before you became no, a counsellor? No, never got to be a PE teacher. Um, when I'd finished my GCSEs, I went to do A-level um, at a secondary school to do my levels as PE um, started the class and everybody else had already done PE as GCSE level for two years mm. because I hadn't I, I was really behind um, so I stayed at sixth form for two weeks thought I'm never going to be able to do this so then I went and got a job oh. at an insurance brokers and <laughs> oh you couldn't get anything more different could you no, really? I went into the office <laughs> world yeah <laughs> Was that a disappointment to you though? Because you'd 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 wanted this for so long, and then yeah, it was yeah. When at the t if I look back now, I think I perhaps should have persevered with it and perhaps have asked for a bit more support. Um, but at the time, I was just thought I'm never going to be able to understand all this. Never going to mm. be able to do it. So yeah, yeah. At the time, it was quite difficult. And then I suppose from that, I sort of worked in quite a lot of different offices, worked at Rolls-Royce as a secretary. Mm. Uh, yeah, and it's been quite a journey to where I am now to becoming a counsellor. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But you never but you never became a PE teacher. I never became a PE teacher. No, but I worked <laughs> in schools. I was a teaching assistant um, and an I've sort of worked into something called a REN room, which was working with children one-to-one. -one. 
Um, mm. And it was from that really that then got me into wanting to be a counsellor from that part. Okay. So any regrets then? Any regrets, Sarah, that you didn't, that you didn't, um, you achieved lots, but you didn't achieve that very specific thing? Uh, I think not, no. I, th- I think it, it, my life just changed direction. Um, oh. so no regrets. And I absolutely love what I'm doing now. Oh, that's good to hear. That's brilliant. Yeah. What about you, Rihanna? What did you What did you fancy doing when you were when you were little? And like listening to that, it really helped me to kind of separate what maybe what other people wanted me mm. to do and what I what was my desire, mm. which is like that kind of really that's an interesting piece there. Um, so I would say there were there's sort of three things which are interesting and one of which I would say would would still be something definitely came from me and I'd still love to do <laughs> um so I wanted to be a hairdresser at one point mm-hmm. but that was because every time I went to my nan's house she would get the coma and I would always like fluff my nan's hair up and she used to love when I went over and just yes. did her hair and I would style it and it probably looked <laughs> awful but she'd be like oh you can be my hairdresser when you're older and it was almost like Mm. oh I'm gonna grow up I'll be a hairdresser so I can come and do Nan's hair and Mm -hmm. that was really interesting and and it's really funny when I didn't become a hairdresser it's like she was like you were supposed to become a hairdresser so you could have done my hair you know Mm. so there's a bit there about the reason like because I probably didn't want to but it was like oh I'll do that for my Nan which is really interesting yeah but I didn't do that um I'll go to the other one first about one thing I've always like loved is like the stage and musicals not necessarily acting but I love like musicals and West End and I do like to sing and so sometimes if I've gone to see a West End I thought I wish I could just be on that stage and be the singer singing this song so and Mm -hmm. I think I still have this piece of it that that's my that comes from me that's definitely not from somebody else um and the third thing was I was brought up um, in a in a religion, and in that religion, it was um, expect it, education wasn't really encouraged or secular work encouraged. It was more like um, do stuff within the religion, so sort of like volunteer within the religion, sort of get mm. part time work and then volunteer within the religion, and so that really was kind of my plan, as in I'll leave school at sixteen, get a job, part time do this voluntary work, do different, mm. and I actually went to Chile and I was, I did some missionary work in Chile when I was in my okay. team. So it kind of was a path again, more, it was a, what I was supposed to do as being part mm. of that religion, but I'll leave it there. We'll get to the dot, dot, dot bit. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> well, when you were, it was interesting when you were talking about y- y- your grandma, actually, because I remember when I when I was a kid, I've thought about this question. I thought, what did I really want to do? And I, I found it difficult to come up with anything. I really thought I want to be this or I want to be that. But when I was little, I used to perform in front of my grandma and granddad singing songs. And I absolutely loved that. And I love to dance and I still do love to dance. So there was always there was always that. But I was actually I was brought up um, Well, I went to a Catholic school. And I do remember um, often when the teacher said, what do you want to be when you, when you grow up? Some of the girls sometimes would say, I want to be a nun or I want to be a nun sister. Or, um, and I never wanted that. I know that I never, ever wanted that. And I do have this memory. I must have been sort of top, top infant, so seven, something like that. I do remember saying to one of the nuns that I wanted to be a long distance lorry driver. <laughs> I didn't ever want to be a long distance lorry driver it was more I don't want to be a nun and I want to do something love it different. <laughs> you have that <laughs> rebel piece that I have <laughs> yeah and I just and I do remember that but it's it was not it it was yeah. like when I was at school and we were taking up a musical instrument I took up the trumpets because all the girls were taking up the violin or the flute yeah. which are lovely instruments but I didn't want to be yeah. I'm not going to do I'm not going to do that because everybody else is supposed to be doing that so yeah which probably says more about me just as an individual <laughs> rather than you know because I like to yeah bit of a rebel I suppose I like that but I've never but I never became a long distance lorry driver no. <laughs> and I never became 
a star of the of the stage I'm afraid it's not too late is it no never too late so I mean maybe that's we'll what... make our own thing yeah, yeah that's my next question really is it is it ever too is it ever too late I mean Sarah you were saying that you know when you got to to, to sixth form it felt like you were a little bit behind so you decided mm. oh, it's a bit too maybe a bit too late for me to do that but what were you 18 yeah yeah 16 16 yeah, at the 16, time yeah yeah, yeah. So is, yeah. It, is it ever too late yeah. to if it's something that we is still really important to us mm -hmm. or something new that becomes important you often hear people say don't you well I'm this age or I'm that age it's too late for me now mm -hmm. is it ever too late no I don't think so I think like with my counselling so I started my training for that in 2005 um, and I sort of went to college for two years and then I had two children and then so some people could say well that, that's it now you know you've done a bit of it and mm. but, but now I'm going to get back there when the children got sort of a bit older and and yeah and, and as you know I've qualified last year so I think mm. if it's something you really want to do really aspire you will if you put the effort in you can get there yeah mm yeah abs absolutely absolutely I don't think you know people people live to a really grand old age these days don't they you know it's it feel like it feels like it's changed a bit doesn't it mm -hmm. yeah definitely it's interesting where that piece comes mm -hmm. from I think within ourselves or maybe also what people put on other people as in mm. oh well that's too late now you can't do that now and I have a lot of clients that come to therapy um even young people maybe because they've chosen a mm. uni course and then actually they found oh it's not for me and then they think my life is over because I've chosen the wrong mm. course and obviously we know it's not over but in their world it's it's over I've made the wrong choice and it's really interesting um at different points in life we really think that was our one chance to do something one chance to have children one chance to have this certain job mm. and that that, that that we can't change that that we can't change our mind so there's no again there's like lack of compassion that mm. we're not allowed to change our minds that you know it's okay that we tried that and it wasn't for us let's try something yeah. else and maybe that that sort of that idea that you can that you can change that it's never too late ironically is something I think that you develop with with age isn't it because it often is is younger people who feel very constrained by other people's expectations um I when I was at, when I was at school um, I went to a school that was that was very it was very academic but it was very science and very science led so I remember doing my my A levels uh, A levels I didn't want to do because we were pushed into doing like three sciences and maths um, so I, I did I, I did um, those kind of A levels and went went to do pharmacy at university and hated it with a passion. So after, you know, after, after my first year, I changed and did something I was more interested in. But it, was, it felt like a massive decision at the time. And it, I, did feel, I did feel a little bit like I was letting people down. Yeah, expectations of other people. Yeah, and yeah, I was, I was 19, you know, if you can't change your mind at 19, you know, when can you? But... Um, you know, and I, I, I do sort of, I do blame school for that, really. Um, I, think, I think schools are better in that respect now. I would hope they are. And there's, there's, there's value given to all sorts of subjects. Mm. <laughs> My daughter's just left school Maybe. last year. So I don't know. I still feel, I still think um, that sort of the scholastic system is more like that trying to get sort of square mm. pegs into round mm. holes sometimes. Mm. And um children and young people they're so individual and actually as they grow older they need more mm. autonomy they need more creativity they need mm. more life skills and I think I do you know, seeing my daughter go through secondary school she was just going through the motions in the last year really and it's mm. only now going to college that she's there's pieces of of sort of teens definitely they need they need that unique part of themselves to be able to thrive and I think her being able to go to college and have that creative part mm. is the bit that was missing you know so mm. yeah I'm not sure that has changed I'm afraid mm. completely. no I guess yeah. yeah she's got you though to to support her and I'm sure that makes a, a you know a massive mm -hmm. yeah 
a massive difference yes yeah to kind of go for what she wants rather than the external expectation which of course is um huge and often again Mm. a lot of the time that people end up in the counseling room is because they're not living by their own sense of self they're living by an expectation that was put on them Mm. and so they're not living their true life they're living somebody else's version of what mm. they should be not what they want to be and that's that covers a multitude of things yeah. that covers or education even living living what they thought they wanted for themselves and it's changed yeah. and they, yeah. they can't allow themselves to think actually yeah. it, it's okay to change it's not a failure if I if I change mm-hmm. but I remember when I started um because I came came to counseling you know relatively late and I I remember someone saying to me, it's not a good time to leave your job now. It's not a good time to start your own business. It's not. And I was like, yeah, but but when will be a good time? Because it's always going to be a little bit of a leap in the darkness, isn't it? Always, you know, and I mean, good on good on you, Sarah, that you, you know, you finished last. Was it last March? Already got your own business. I mean, that's that's pretty immense, to be honest. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's been a little bit different now because I've been working online rather than face to face since mm-hmm. lockdown. So I've got two children at home working and my husband in a room. So yeah. I can't wait to get back to face And your dog. And yeah, your dog. <laughs> yeah, third in the background. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. You know, we're all at home, aren't we, at the moment? Yeah. So that's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's interesting but it's, that. But it's exciting, isn't it? It's exciting. New things. Yeah, yeah. yeah that bit you said there was really spot on um about because I was thinking about that saying sometimes when we don't get what we want it's the most wonderful stroke of luck do you know that saying I don't know if I've mm. got that right but it's sometimes what we think we want and mm. actually then when we again sort of find out oh there's other options or maybe that wasn't what I wanted that was mm. what was wanted for me or expected of me mm. it's like oh I'm actually glad that you know it, it hasn't ended that up that mm. way in, in other choices and sometimes I think those choices might come later and they did for me mm. so again like going back to the dot 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 part of the story oh yeah we never we yeah, never got to that. The, <laughs> the expectation was that I would be in this religion and I would be you know that would be the main mm. focal point almost like a career mm. um but actually I'm I don't I don't it's not a religion I belong to now and um, again, I think there was an aversion to kind of advance in education. So I didn't do things that I could have done at that age, you know, that like college. I didn't mm. go to college. I left at 16 because you could in those days and I got work. Mm. And then and so there were yeah. things I didn't do till later. I did college and uni later. Mm-hmm. And yet where I am now as a counsellor, as you know, and again, I've mm. been a single mum through some of that. So again, you know, there's there's no like you can't do that because you've had a a child young or something, you know? Um, I think there's a lot of things that people can make barriers, but actually we we really, really can Mm. access these pieces. And um, so to kind of go back and go to college to to learn, do different Mm. courses and then actually find my vocation to become a counsellor. And then goodness, like counsellor, supervisor, tutor, it just takes you other Mm. places. Mm. I didn't know this is where I wanted to be but I know it's where I'm supposed to be now. So it's really interesting how yeah. that not getting what yeah. you think you were supposed to have is the most wonderful stroke of luck. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I was, I was brought up by, by a single mum. There was, there was, there was four of us. I've got three brothers and there was four of us. And my dad died when I was, when I was very small. So my mum, she, she had to go out and she, 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 um, she went in for teacher training. She just had to, she had to create, a, a life for us you know she had to um she had to go out and get a, a decent job and you know I think a lot of she's told me that a lot of her so-called friends were quite um were quite judgy about that and you know and mm-hmm. and it's but she had but she had to do it and it's given and it's given me that and she did it very successfully um you know but it has given me that feeling that you, you want something you have to go out and do it you know you don't it doesn't matter what other people think and you know my mum might have been a little bit hurt by the reaction of some people at the time but it didn't stop her because it could she didn't have a choice you know and so she's always been this incredibly strong person mm-hmm. and it's a great lesson to give 
to give to your kids, isn't it? I mean, it's it, it you know it was born out of out of something that was that was a tragic situation really for her. Yeah. But but she made the, she made the best of it for yeah. sure. More than. I think that's a bit like me because I was a single parent for yeah. five years as well um, and so I sort of missed out on education and mm. sort of regret, regret, regretted I suppose not going to university not you know doing some of the things I did but I can say that now I go to university and I'm doing my master's course at the mm. university. <laughs> took me a while I'm 44 now but <laughs> yeah yeah so you can get there if you really want to in the end <laughs> yeah and 44 is nothing you're just like a young whippersnapper aren't you <laughs> oh, I just love you. it when people say things like that when we're, you know, it's like, <laughs> of course yes <laughs> so we've talked about our dreams when we were when we were kids and we we it sounds like although we didn't we didn't achieve those dreams we achieved lots of other things so that doesn't really matter but what about what about your dreams now <laughs> i'm gonna go to sarah first so i okay. got some more time to think i suppose with me it's um to complete my master's course so that's three mm -hmm. years so that that's quite on my mind at the moment because it's quite mm -hmm. a thing that i'm doing um and then I suppose like with my counselling, although I've set up privately, um, I'm also, I say, doing some work for First Steps. Um, and I'm also starting next month working for um, a funeral directors, doing a day's counselling with them a week. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I actually, I had the counselling session myself this week and she was saying, you know, where do you want to be in three years' time? And I was mm. like, I don't want to put that on me at the moment. I feel that I've got so many different avenues and so, still so much learning, so many different places. I don't want to say, I'm going to be here in three years. I'm going to yeah. just, I'm going to see what comes to me and reach out to what I can and just see where I fall, I think, really, in place. So It sounds like it's all to play for, Sarah. You've got, so, you've got lots of things going on. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, yeah. and I think I quite like that varied not just being at home all the time and to be able to go you know mm. into another setting and be around other people and yeah yeah so it's quite exciting I feel my future. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. Well you look back to your life two years ago or even a year and a half ago yeah, it sounds yeah. like it's completely changed. Yeah definitely yeah 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 I was working in an office and <laughs> not overly enjoying my job there yeah no regrets then yeah no regrets so no so thank you to chrysalis and <laughs> where i am now brilliant oh that's fantastic so what about you rihanna have we given you enough time to think about it oh, yeah well. are you still gonna go star of the show I mean yeah I feel like that's in my future somewhere you'll see me somewhere on stage <laughs> um yeah no i would i mean i've I, I thought when you, you know, the, the places I've gone um, in the question, I think professionally I am happy with where I am as in, mm. you know, there's, there's, I don't, there's, I don't think there's anything else I want to do as a career. I'm happy as a counsellor. I'm happy as a supervisor. Mm. I'm happy as a tutor. And those things all feel right. I don't feel mm. like there's anything, obviously training wise, I think I'm quite interested in like neuroscience and the connections of that to mm. counselling. I'm quite interested in that emotional brain stuff. So I think from training point of view, I can see me my interest in things, but I don't feel like I want to um, go any higher in qualification or anything like that, as in mm. PhDs or things. I, I, I'm OK with where I'm at um, and career wise. I think probably the question goes more to you know, personal, as in where I want to be with my work-life balance and, mm. you know, all the things I suppose to a certain degree um, have served me really well being a single mum and working hard and, and actually mm -hmm. those pieces I spend, this is like the, the place that's probably the aversion to go to, is my daughter's growing up and, you know, she's not always going to be my travel buddy. <laughs> so mm. I think my, my, um, my immediate goal is once COVID is gone-ish, mm -hmm. is I'd love to go back to that creative part of traveling and, you know, that investment in self and, and you know, all those things, yeah. I think, you know, so that's immediate. And I think probably longer term, I might have to consider a travel buddy, <laughs> a minute, you know, let somebody into my life. 
Mm. <laughs> so how old is how old is your daughter, Rihanna? She is seventeen. She'll be eighteen in October. Okay. So yeah, growing up. Yeah, that's hard. I mean, um, yeah, my daughter's just just twenty two, and we do we do a mum daughter um, trip every year. Lovely. And. Um, Obviously, this this year we didn't go very far afield, um, but yeah, that would be great if COVID was was on the way out by September. That would be fantastic because that's when we go. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it does it is hard. I think when they when they're growing up, yeah, getting that balance for sure. Yeah, I mean, with regard to my to my dreams in terms of career, I'm, I'm nearly a supervisor. I will be oh, by the end of next month. Yeah. <laughs> so um so that's brilliant so that's that's something that I've, I've wanted to do for, for a while and um finally got around to finally got around to doing um I'm working more with um homeless hostel I got involved with a couple of years ago so I now do um now doing a day a week for them counseling mm -hmm. and I was I was doing some mental health education as well but obviously covid we can't do sort of face to face work with you know with groups and things yeah um and i'm really really enjoying that and funnily enough um in my 20s i did i did a master's degree and i focused it on homelessness so i was i really wanted to work with the homeless when i was in my 20s and got a few interviews didn't get didn't get a job because at the time i'd got very good qualifications but i hadn't got the experience so um, it's kind of, that's come a bit full circle because now I am working. Now I have got the experience and I've got a different sort of qualification. So that's quite nice because that is a dream that's sort of, I didn't even realise I was moving towards and suddenly it's realised without me, do you know what I mean? Without me doing anything to, um, you know, to kind of facilitate that. But I'm a bit like you as well, I think, Rihanna. I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm in a good place work-wise, I think. Um, but sometimes my work-life balance is a little bit out of kilter and has been has been recently. Um, so traveling for sure when COVID's over, I want to get back to that. Yeah. And all du all during lockdown, I've been doing um, I've been learning Spanish again. Um, something I've been doing for years and years, and I start and I stop and I start and I start. Well, this. I've been doing it again for nearly a year now, um, two lessons a week. So when I'm actually, get, I feel like I'm getting somewhere Definitely. because my absolute dream is to get a little place in a little apartment in Southern Spain where I can go and spend, you know, some weekends and maybe a little bit of extended time. Who no. knows? <laughs> sounds lovely yeah it does <laughs> yeah. Might, might see you there <laughs> it does sound lovely and it's and it's even though there's lots of beautiful places I thought well it's got to be Spain because I know a bit of Spanish already so um got to work around the language <laughs> I've got to work around what I know what I know you know I've got to work Fair with enough. what I know so um but there are so many beautiful little places you know beautiful little pueblos in Spain aren't there and and um, so that's no. that's that's my dream. That's yeah. my dream. Yeah. <laughs> so if we if we do this again, you know, in, in 10 years time. Yeah. <laughs> where we all are. <laughs> you to see where we all are. Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> it's, in, it's interesting this kind of um, not knowing. And again, you know, I, I hear what you're saying about kind of some, it's almost like something finds you. And it's like, it's mm. you know, the, the, the homeless sector, that's, it was something that was there and then it's found its way to you. Yeah, and, and that I, entirely found yeah. me. I got a call from them, they approached me. So that entirely found me. Yeah, it's, it's just, I just find that really interesting of, um, mm. you know, I don't know, you know, everyone has different beliefs about these different things and whether it's magic beans or whatever that is, you know, mm. <laughs> or the universe. And it is interesting how things happen. And again, you know, with teaching that that came to me, I didn't seek it, it came to me. And actually, mm. I absolutely love it. Mm. You know, it's, it's a piece of, of my week, or, or, you know, my month or whenever I do that, that 
I love and interestingly like you said there's there's a course I did a very long time ago um, which was a group training certificate in one job and then I did a petals you know the petals like teaching mm. qualification I did that in a yeah. different job none of which were anything to do with anything I was like going to teach really it was just all job related with, with some training and yeah again you never know where that's then coming full circle mm. and going to be useful and that's yeah. one thing actually um, a boss used to say to me um, one of my bosses when I was younger he said whatever trainers off you just go for it just do it mm. because you might not think it's relevant now but you never know yeah. when that might be relevant in the future and that has rung true more than once mm. So yeah. if it's free, especially, grab it. Or if it's free, yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought I was leaving teaching behind. When I stopped my primary school teaching, I thought I was leaving teaching behind. And now fast forward, you know, a, a, a good few years on, and I'm sort of doing counselling and teaching. And and it's in, and teaching, actually, is for, for Chrysalis, teaching counselling students, it's really, I felt it was really rejuvenated my love of teaching mm -hmm. again, actually. So it's a nice, it, for me, it's a nice mix. Yeah, yeah. And who knows, Sarah, this could be in your, this could be yeah. in your future. You've worked in, you've worked in schools, haven't you? So yeah, I've been a teaching assistant, <laughs> not yeah, quite so a teacher. Yeah. Potentially yeah. it could be, you know, it could be something in a couple yeah. of years time yeah. that you, that you consider. Yeah. And it's like what you're just saying, I'm just thinking of a funeral director, because I worked there mm. sort of four or five years ago doing accountancy and now mm. I'm going back there to do counselling for them so that that's yeah wow. <laughs> so was it a, was it an environment that you that you enjoyed working in I mean you might not have enjoyed the accountancy so much but was it envir an environment you enjoyed working in yeah because when I did start there I did say to her about my dream one day to do counselling when I was at mm. the interview and mm. she actually said to me the lady that owns the funeral directors oh well we've got a bereavement group that we run every week um mm -hmm. and it's people that have been bereaved as partners you, you know and they run this little group every tuesday afternoon so i got involved with that as well and I, I, yeah i had a real heart for it and i met some really good friends who also came to chrysalis with me and we did the course together so yeah mm -hmm. and i'm going to be working with one of them um a lady called Faye and we're going to be doing the counselling together at, at the funeral directors now so that's come round in a circle too <laughs> it's yeah it's funny yeah. isn't it it's yeah. really it's funny the way that things happen and, and you know like you say Rihanna some people believe that if it's there for you it will kind of come and find you at, at, at some stage but I think there's a, I saw something on Facebook today a kind of a meme and I can't remember exactly what it was but it, just to paraphrase it was kind of if the door won't open however hard you push it's not it's not your door maybe it's not meant for you yeah, yeah I, I quite I quite like that idea really and and yeah. it kind of then allows you to sort of have a more what will be will be kind of kind of attitude yeah. because yeah. I think some people can waste a lot of time regretting things that yeah things that have happened and you know to yeah. me every, every experience you have is is a useful is a useful is. experience yeah, yeah. Yeah. however hard or you know yeah. challenging it is it's you it, it kind of is useful in the end isn't it so yeah and again that that bit like I think there's something to add to that piece about um it finds you but you have to show up and you have to participate when it does you know because otherwise yeah. we're just going to be led by oh it will just happen for me it doesn't happen for you it, it comes your mm. way and then you know you, mm. you you have to do something to participate so it doesn't pass you by so it's not it's a two-way thing you know we oh, have yeah, to show up definitely it's like we have to say oh okay yes say yes <laughs> mm, definitely so Sarah going back to your PE dreams yeah. are, you, are you still very fit then do you still go running and <laughs> yeah I, I go running as far as I do the park run on a Saturday morning when well before Covid what do you mean as a spot you know that that's a big thing isn't it <laughs> three, <Yeah. laughs> three mile <laughs> but as far as as far as racing I don't do that anymore um and now with my new dog I'm walking like <laughs> lots every day with her she needs lots of exercise so yeah I still enjoy running but more of a keep fit now rather than the yeah but getting you know setting my goals too high at the moment <laughs> well it sounds like you've got lots to do and you've got children as well haven't you so yeah. you've yeah yeah Spend so lots of times on her uh, football pictures and <laughs> watching mm. them play football <laughs> so how far does your dog need to be walked a day 
at the moment because she's only six months so I've been uh, probably about three mile in the morning and then I do about a mile and a half with her in the, in the wow. afternoon yeah. that's quite a lot then isn't it so you might not be a PE teacher but you, you may be as fit as one yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> <She's safe>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh well, ladies, it's been lovely talking to you. And we sound like we've still got, you know, we might not have we might not have achieved those childhood dreams. You know, I'm not a long distance lorry driver. Rihanna isn't yet a star of the West End. <laughs> and Sarah's not a PE teacher, but it sounds like we're all doing pretty well and we're all happy with what we're doing. Yeah, definitely. And <laughs> we've got we've got dreams that, that are taking us further on because it just seems sad, doesn't it, when people say, I've not got any dreams anymore, I'm too old. Nobody's too old. And I think that's the... Mm. And actually, I think, you know, I don't know if it was you that mentioned it, Rihanna, lots of, um, maybe in the chat we, we've had before about lots of, lots of our students are of all ages, aren't they? And I find that. So it's good to see that, that lots of people really do believe that, that you can change at any time. You know, it's, it's it's a good lesson to kind of take through life with you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Always room to grow. Yeah. Always room to grow. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed listen, listening to our chat today. If you, um, it will be on. Well, if it, it's on YouTube, if you're watching it, obviously. So there's lots of these chrysalis on the couches, and if you enjoyed them, um, you know, please please tune in for some more. There's um, please try and please follow our channel. The next one will be hosted by Joanna Williams and the title of that is My Friend the Therapist. So I'm sure they're going to have some lots of lots of lots of interesting um, chats to do with that. And we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>